Hey, how you doing? Sean Tech back again here. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, what a great uh, time we had attaching the QFN chip. Now, what about all of the rest of the uh, surrounding components? Uh, when it's in addition to that Q4, it seems like we are surrounded over by a whole bunch of other uh, electronic resistors that are with it here. Um, so let's head on over to the schematic. I have made, um, with some uh, folks calling in, they were saying like, uh, uh, hey, uh, there are some things which seem to be uh, different from uh, uh, one uh, uh, their their version of this versus others. These are some of my students who are calling and making small observations. So I've made a couple of changes over to a few of the components of the schematic. But one of which in particular, which will be an interesting thing that we'll experiment with, is the one microfarad capacitor that I have. And a lot of them have suggested that 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor is what uh, they've kind of been using. So uh, for bypass capacitors, that's not going to matter um, too too much in the end. Um, it is going to matter in the fact that these bypass capacitors, the typically speaking, the higher the capacitance, the more uh, shock absorbance they happen to have. Kind of be the easiest way to maybe phrase what that is. Um, so uh, the, like static shock absorbance, not like, you know, mechanical shock absorbance, more like static shock absorbance. Um, but either way, um, the one capacitor that will be interesting to see is the is the coupling capacitor C3, which is here to basically kill off the DC. Now, in the uh, schematic design, we were using a 0.1 microfarad capacitor um, in in terms of this, but I'm actually uh, I don't have any with me right now. So we're gonna see we're gonna see how this works with one microfarad uh, capacitors and make modifications to um, to our schematic as such. Um, so what what I'd like to kind of get into is what some of the other ca capacitors are that are kind of uh, floating around here. So on the top block, I've actually got an amplifier circuit from the filtration part, which comes off of the coupler circuit, is a net list called FILT1 for filter one. And that FILT1 connects up to here. So you can imagine that between here and here, um, those two lines, there is a line that is drawn between this node here um, well, this net list, which is connected up to that node, over to this net list here, which is connected over to R6, which is a 47 kilo ohm resistor. This may have been different in my previous videos that I recently changed that um, uh, while just being off camera. So, um, but then this is my um, inverting amplifier, um, which is connected up to on the uh, uh, inverting side to a 47k resistor and a 2 mega ohm resistor. So that's 2 mega is 2 million and 47k rounded up is about 50k. So it's about 50,000. Um, divide 2 mega, 2 million by 50,000 and you get an amplification value of approximately 40 um, plus or minus some tolerance with it on there. Um, and that's all made in reference to um, the voltage that is set over here between R3 and R4. Now, I realize right now that um, uh, some of the people who are designing their, um, uh, some of my students who've been working on this, you don't have these two uh, values right there. This is just straight up connected to to ground, which if you're looking at this, the reason I had this set towards towards anything really was just for experimentation purposes when I was first designing this. Um, really, uh, it's really connected to ground. So I've got a large resistor, R3, 2 mega ohms, and a small resistor, uh, 120 ohms, which basically means this is like, this is pretty close to being grounded in terms of its electronic value. Um, then we get down to um, R7, 8, 9, and 10, as well as C4. We talked about C4 in the last video, which happens to be a bypass capacitor for the uh, LM324QT operational amplifier QFN chip that we put down that um, uh, is going to provide amplification uh, for uh, the circuitry. Now, R7 is connected up high to VCC, uh, which comes down and creates um, a series of voltage drops. These actually become our reference value voltages for all of the operational amplifiers that are two through four set up to be comparators. These comparators, uh, what they do um, is if the uh, input value coming off of the uh, um, amplifier, which is, uh, I have it set as in dash M, um, uh, which is, uh, might be kind of what this might be like microphone, uh, might be is what this is, the amplifier net list in orange, but is also connected in three separate spots to each of the inverting channels. Um, so that's one comparison. Now comparators in a nutshell, um, if the, <laughs> I'm going to speak in kind of layman's terms here. Uh, the, if the plus is larger than the minus in voltage value. So here's the minus. 
are right here. Here's the minus. Actually, so in the case of um, my circuit here, the minus is actually moving up and down. That's what's going to be my voice that's making an electronic signal. Whereas the plus, the non-inverting side, is going to be basically stuck at some sort of a reference value voltage. If the minus voltage, the voltage on the minus, which is uh, my hand right here, um, is less than the minus on the plus, then the output of the comparator is effectively zero volts ground, or whatever my ground value or my VCC minus value happens to be. But if the minus is larger than the uh, uh, than the plus, if it's uh, larger than that, uh, then the output is effectively uh, high, whatever the rail happens to be, minus an offset value depending on what the uh, amplifier happens to be. Um, in the case of a general purpose one, this is about whatever the rail voltage, whatever my VCC 3 volts high is, minus about a 0.7 volt drop uh, across there. So if um, this is moving up and down, uh, when this is higher than that, the, uh, the output goes high, um, which effectively is going to change what value is on the output of uh, each one of the, of the channels right here. But in order to do that, I actually have to, I actually have to connect up these resistors. So I've got, let's start with the um, two mega ohm resistors, because it looks like I've got three of them, R3, R5, and R7. Uh, so going over back to my um, circuit here, I've actually picked out, oh, need a, working with the chip, wrist strap is important to it here. Um, so let's see here, we've got um, R3 is located um, up on uh, this part over here, so here is my R3, here is my R5, and my R7 is all conveniently located kind of all in the same spot right there. So all three of these are actually going to receive um, the same uh, chip component, uh, which is a 2 mega ohm uh, chip resistor. Now, I actually looked around in my inventory. Oops, that is not a 2 mega ohm. Um, I actually don't have a 2 mega ohm exactly. Um, I have a what I think is a 2.2 mega ohm. That is not uh, the correct value at all. Uh, let's see. Where are you? Where are you guys? I have a whole bunch of I have a whole bunch of little chip components that are just sort of hanging out here. That's 3.6. Did I grab the right ones? Do I have the right ones? Do I have the right ones in there? Well, there's one of them. So I've got I've got oh, excuse me. I've got one of them here. Okay, I had one of them there. I think my tweezers might be still a little bit sticky from uh, some of the. Uh, uh, fluxing agent that I was using, and that's the problem. That's that's one of the problems with working with a tacky flux is that um, it's tacky is a, is a right way of phrasing kind of what it is. So there's there's one of them right here, two two five. So two two five translates over to two point two uh, mega ohms is is what that is. Now I happen to have a whole bunch of those handy with me here, and I'm trying to find I'm trying to find some of the other ones that I. Happened. I thought I prepared to it here. Here's another one. Yeah, there's another 205. Actually, that says that is 205. That is the uh, correct value of uh, uh, mega ohm value. So it looks like my box may have been uh, a little bit uh, mixed up from uh, where I'm pulling these from. I'm actually just kind of pulling these from random, uh, <laughs> not not completely like random boxes or anything like that, but just like a, I have kind of a box of spare parts, so to speak, which I actually kind of need to <laughs> dig around in right now. Uh, where do I, where did I put that? Uh, very good stuff to have all on screen with me here. It's behind me on my, <laughs> on my bench that's sitting uh, stuck behind me. So I actually have a little bit of a box of assorted values um, and props to uh, my lab tech, uh, uh, John. Thank you so much for putting all of this together. I know John probably spent a heck of a lot of time being able to do this from very, very early on within the, uh, the actual uh, program that we started running there. He's been around with me in the college program all, all the way since the beginning right here and really put a lot of this box uh, kind of together to it there. There we go. So there's the three chip components that uh, we need. Um, one of them is going to be slightly different. That's the two mega ohms. The other one will be two. The other two will be 2.2 mega ohms. One of those 2.2 mega ohms will attach to R3 because ultimately I'm just trying to connect it up to ground anyway. So I mean, what its value happens to be, it almost really doesn't matter. It's just as long as it's big. Probably the bigger the better, actually, for uh, that per particular value. Um, R5 is the uh, uh, the one that's going into the main amplifier circuit, that just also needs to be somewhat big. Um, but then uh, R7 will be the one where we attach the two mega ohm resistors, so we have some control over what the uh, what the voltage happens to be there. Okay, so um, same way that we did uh, before, we're going to um, apply some fluxing agent down to all three of the uh, 
ship components. A generous amount here, a generous amount there. Oh, excuse me, I picked up a couple of travelers with me here. Can you let go for a second? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let go of that. Oh, it's just kind of stuck there in the goo. <laughs> How about that? You know? Jeez. All right. Um, and I'll be using my uh, Hako soldering station with the micro tip pen. I love the micro tip uh, knife pen uh, to it here. And using uh, uh, set to 600 degrees Fahrenheit um, with some lead solder. All right. Check to make sure that I've got a nice tin tip. Actually, I could probably use a little bit of some tinning on the tip. Just a little bit of it there. Gosh, my pen is all wrapped up and around with me here. Uh, now, I just don't, well, yeah, I'm not going to be able to tin one of the pads with the resistor just sort of hanging there. So, will you excuse me? Excuse me? Sorry about that. Can you just kind of move off to the side for a little bit here? I've got some work i got to do. I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, flexing edge kind of pulls that resistor down uh, and into it there. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm just like kind of poking the hole board because my tweezers are stuck inside the uh stuck inside the hole there all right can you all see that can you all see that okay all right r3 r5 r7 all right let's get uh let's get the those guys uh gosh and now my spool is seems like it's got a little bit of a problem with the wire that's coming off of it here there we go gosh i mean all problems kind of problems this morning um okay so r3 i'm going to come down and uh tin Tin that guy there. At least it's assumingly tin that guy. There we go. Gosh, that uh, took a while for that to heat up. Let's see. Now I got the next one there. Got a little bit of some solder there. And the last one is going to be right there. There we go. So I got all three of them uh, tinned up here. Now with the soldering iron in my left hand, let's attach to R3 first, which is going to be uh, supposed to be a 2 mega ohms, but due to my own uh, internal shortage. It's going to actually be a 2.2 mega ohm uh, resistor is what it's going to be. And so we'll heat that guy up there. Have him get attached to that spot. That's pretty good. R5, very similar, is also going to be a 2.2 mega ohm uh, chip resistor. Here we go. There we go. Can you wanna you wanna move over to that spot there? I might actually increase the temperature of my soldering iron just a little bit, just to kind of help with uh, these guys here. And then finally, R7. I'm just gonna check to make sure that you can see that on screen there. Yeah. Good. Kind of move move that guy on over. There we go. Not the prettiest things in the world there, but that's okay. We'll clean that up here in just a little bit. Um, next thing we'll do is we'll tack down the other side of each one of the chip components with uh, soldering iron in my right hand so and the solder in, in my left. Hello? You want to go to there? There we go. There is the one. And there is the two. And coming around the other side to it here. There is the three. All right. And now with just a little bit of some uh, flexing agent, we'll kind of trim everything up here just to make sure that we're all in a good place with uh, all of these parts to it here. Um, I really do. In fact, let me get a little bit closer so you can might be able to see this uh, a little bit easier here. So we'll start with uh, we'll start with our three. And I'm, all I'm doing right now is I'm just checking to make sure that the that the solder joint is uh, adequately bonded up to the uh, chip component by just giving it a little bit of a touch. Same thing over here with R5. I'm just checking to make sure that the fluxing agent, flux is, uh, flux is our friend when it comes to doing surface mount type of uh, uh, bonding, so uh, soldering. We want to make sure that we've got a nice uh, smooth connection. So there we have it. We have uh, uh, the 2.2 mega ohms attached to R3 and R5, and R7 has the 2 mega ohms that's, uh, that's there. Now, R8, R9, and R10 are actually all um, one mega ohm uh, chip components. So the one mega ohms that I've got, do I have one mega ohms? Let's see. There's one of them. I'm going to leave that sitting there. Oh my goodness. I see a little, I see, is that a hair? Is that a hair? Something like that there? You notice all kinds of strange things when you're looking down through the microscopes with that. Oh my goodness. All right. So there is, uh, there's one of them. I need three of these. I thought I grabbed three, and in case I didn't, I'll have to go back into my my inventory, so to speak, in order to grab them. Let's say 43. Uh, that's not it there. That is 
That is it there. There we have one zero five. Those are the you know one zero followed by five more zeros is one million. So that's one mega ohms. Now that's going to get attached to R eight, R nine, and R ten. Now I think R eight, R nine, and R ten are all located around the um, QFN component. So there's R eight, there's R nine, and there's R ten to it here. Um, what I'm going to do um, really quickly here, just to kind of give it a try to see if this works just a little bit better, is increase the heat of my um, soldering iron um, with the micro tip pen. Not by a tremendous amount or anything like that. So I'm going to take the soldering iron out of its cradle, insert the key to be able to change this, and I'm going to increase this to, oh, let's increase it up to 640 degrees Fahrenheit is what we'll do. Um, Next thing that we'll do uh, is grab my uh, solder wire and fluxing agent. We're going to put some flux down on R8, R9, and R10. There we go. Generous amount of flux on each one of those. Can you see those okay? Now R10 is kind of up towards the top. Uh, we'll start with R8 first on the on the bottom. Is uh, tinning the uh, tinning the left hand pad. There we go. R10. We'll tin the left hand pad. And R9, I'll tin the uh, bottom of the pad. Uh, once again, I am right-handed, so I do tend to work in this particular way. So it's one of those things that just kind of sometimes comes with uh, with practice. One of the things to notice is I'm making sure that each one of my chip components is attached with the numbers on the top, or the black side part of the resistor on the top. These resistors are what we would call um, low tolerance uh, resistors, um, meaning that they're um, their tolerance values, the variability of one resistor to another resistor um, is, well, I just, I put that upside down. Let me just take that guy and flip it around a little bit there. There we, there we go, I think. Yeah, 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 Over there. Yeah, that's there. It might be soldered in place on the right-hand side. Um, and so uh, the, uh, typically speaking, um, it means that one resistor has a slightly different electronic value of resistance compared to another resistor. Um, uh, and so um, that value for these guys is, I think, 5%. I think each resistor, I think each resistor, oh, my, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. My resistor has a Dr. Seuss hat going on there. <laughs> look at that, jeez. Um, it means that, uh, but anyway, the, uh, the black-looking uh, components are essentially like in the um, plus or minus um, – one percent to five percent. I think mine are all five percent is uh, what they are. Gosh, that resistor looks awful in terms of how that looks. So let me come at that with a knife tip just a little bit there and sort of just get that guy to come back into its place. There you go. This guy also does not look the prettiest of pretties here. Um, R9 that is. So I'm going to kind of take a little bit of a second here to try to heat up both. Oops, I ruined it. There we go. Would you come back here for a second? Is that okay? Will you will you please uh, come back to your home, so to speak? I'm heating up both of them. You might be wondering yourself, how are you heating up both pads at the same time and getting them not to be connected? Uh, the secret sauce is fluxing agent that is making it to where the solder wants to stick down to the pads that they're being uh, attached to um, uh, for, for what it is that we're working on. Uh, not to mention the knife tip. Um, soldering with a knife tip, I can't tell you how many times I've had to do that from from one spot to another uh, to be able to do that. So do I still have, yeah, I still have that, <laughs> I still have that stalactite that's sticking up out of that component there. Let's uh, let's put some fluxing agent on that guy there um, and then uh, uh, take a little bit of a tap down to that. And now that's back, uh, back down to normal. That's looking much, much better. Um, overall, the higher temperature of 640 degrees Fahrenheit is most certainly helping. I'm going to attach C4 because I know that uh, for what I want to put there is going to be a one microfarad uh, bypass capacitor. Uh, and I actually happen to have that kind of handy on me right now. So we're going to take some fluxing agent, uh, putting it across here. These capacitors are not polarized, so it doesn't uh, really matter uh, which side of the... Uh, um, uh, which side of the device I stick this capacitor. Later on, uh, we'll work with some polarized devices. Probably actually in this video, we're going to be working with some LEDs that are actually polarized, some what I call, um, uh, or what are called discrete um, LEDs. I call them that too, uh, uh, for the for the most part here. Here's C4 is going to come down and get attached to it here. I'm going to move this down. I'm going to let it sit into the mixture for enough time. There we go. I for sure have a... Uh, bond to it there. I have a nice, I have a nice uh, way that it is wicked up onto the side of the uh, component. I'm going to heat up uh, 
the other side by actually touching the capacitor as well. And then apply some solder from the solder wire, making sure that it wicks all the way up onto that part there. And apply just a little bit of some fluxing agent at the end of it just to kind of smooth some things out. And a little bit of a tap there, a little bit of a tap. Hey, tap? You want to tap? Okay, can you tap for me? Hey, there we go. There we go. Well, much, much cleaner. Much, much cleaner. Oh, that's what that looks like. Um, lastly, um, we have um, R4 and R6. Now, R6 is, uh, I believe, a 47 kilo ohm resistor is what I've got uh, in, uh, in my drawings. Now, did I have 47 kilo ohms? I think I had something just a little bit different. Did I have something just a little bit? I had something a little bit different, and now I've lost all the components that I originally had just kind of sitting out with it right there. I've got a 43 kiloohm. So again, this is a little bit, it's a little bit off um, from where it is, but this is ultimately just kind of an amplifier is what it is. I also have a lower resistor. Well, actually, I had a lower resistor. I thought I had one, and as it turns out, um, I don't have one. So I'm going to go back into my inventory box of 0603 resistors um, and pull out just some smaller end uh, resistors. What it is, it doesn't really almost doesn't matter what it is here. I've got plenty of what appears to be 62 ohm resistors, just 62 ohms. So the number that should be on that, that resistor should be a 6, a 2, and then a 0, followed by the end of it for the uh, chip value of resistance. And indeed, um, that has a 6, a 2, and a 0 that wants to leave off of my um, uh, components there. So let's solder these last two resistors into place um, here. Um, yeah, let me know also. Um, so I, I am actively um, looking at the uh, comments while I... Uh, while I uh, um, do this. And at some point, um, I may actually do an assembly of a circuit board um, com just completely live uh, on, on, uh, uh, on YouTube. Let me know if you are interested in seeing something like that, uh, you know, having your comments there or email me as well. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't have like, uh, I don't really have a lot of viewers, I guess, right now. Uh, but if you are interested in something like that, and if this is something that kind of interests you, um, let me know in the uh, in the comments if you'd like to potentially see some more of another type with it. Um, I'm putting together for the most part fairly simple um, electronic circuits. Um, it's just one of those things that um, I've been an instructor for uh, students who have been uh, CR4, I believe, is the uh, lower of the two resistors. So that's going to be the 620. Uh, or sorry, not 620, that's uh, 62 ohm resistor. Um, I tend to teach students um, electronics and how to do this if, to people who have never done this before. Um, those of my students who are watching, some of you may have had some experience doing this at some point, um, but most of you have likely, uh, this, this is very much, uh, uh, th uh, when you first started doing this, this was very much your first time um, ever really, you know, doing this. Um, uh, uh, you know, with uh, the the skill. Oh boy, another another uh, hat on there. Jeez. Um, we'll give that guy a little bit of a tap here in just a second. Um. So for but for many folks, uh, it's like it's it's their first time doing this. Um. That's not to say that this is you know easy to be able to do. It's it's not easy at all uh, to be able to do uh, anything like this. Uh, you have to have some practice at being able to do, it. and that's one of the things that at the uh, the college where I teach at that we we have uh, we spend a lot of time um, doing labs that involve. Uh, uh, a lot of the hands-on based work that it takes to actually get this to, to where it's correct. Um, hey, uh, st any students from here, throw a little comment in the, in the comment section. What do you, how much hands-on based uh, solder work do we wind up doing uh, within, uh, within uh, our, uh, our laboratories? Kind of uh, uh, give, give some of the other folks a little bit of a, a, a thought behind that. So there we go. There is uh, R3 and R4, which form the um, um, connection down to... Uh, uh, really down to, it's connecting it down to ground for the most part, that's what it's doing. R5 and R6, which provide the amplification of the circuit, and then R7, 8, 9, and 10, uh, which all form the uh, 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 reference voltages, uh, the three reference voltages from the three connections in there that's going to go down to the uh, uh, to the amplifier. So, um, but yeah, so uh, let me know uh, in the uh, comments below uh, what you think about this. Uh, uh, send me a note, send me, uh, send me anything with it on there, or just say like, hi, how's it going uh, to it there. Um, all right, folks, uh, thanks you very much for joining on in. We'll, uh, we'll see you in the next one. See you later.